Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm on my ten toes. I'm on the grind. It's your girl Zai. Today we're back with a mango. Who we got today, man? We got the story uh -huh. of K Flock. K Flock, know what I'm saying? Mm. Free that boy, know what I'm saying? Free that boy. All right, man. And uh, shout out to um, Publish K. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Listen, at the end of the day, though, man. Let's, let's tune, tune in. in. Four hundred and thirty-two days have passed since K Flock surrendered himself to detectives for a murder that happened on December sixteenth, two thousand and twenty-one. While walking with his sister and her friend down 151st in Amsterdam, he crossed paths with another gang member who spotted him from inside of a barber shop. Words were exchanged and just moments later, the man who was identified as Oscar Hernandez died from bullets to the neck and chest. After 911 calls came pouring in, investigators quickly identified K-Flock in his $4,000 outfit as the main suspect. They then issued a warrant for his arrest on first degree murder charges on December 23rd, and without question, he self admitted. He was only 18 years old at the time. Three days later, his lawyer would. K Flock was only 18? I thought he was older than that. Me too. He self admitted. He was only 18 years old at the time. Three days later, his lawyer would release a statement claiming the shooting was done in self defense. Somebody walked out to confront him. It's all on video. When the guy hits the ground, he's got a loaded gun that was in his pocket that his hand was on at the time. We consider that to be self-defense. The surveillance footage that was released seemed to strongly back this up, seeing that he was the one who was approached and then yeah. threatened. Yeah. Yeah. Now, though so his court date would continuously be delayed the entire 2022 year, it was likely he was going to beat the case and be released within a matter of time. But the feds had other plans, and they want anything but to see K-Flock back on the streets of the Bronx. Of course. You know why? Because they've been watching him. They know what he yeah, about. They, yeah, and they see ODL yeah, now. We don't want another thug on the street. You know what I said? We, we got him. We got him now. Okay, let's try to, let's try to not, like, draw anything on. Yeah, anything like, on. That's, on, that's the only thing they had to do was get him behind bars, I feel like. Yeah, it's like. They knew that was self-defense. Yeah. Uh-huh. Plans, and they want anything but to see K-Flock back on the streets of the Bronx. On February 23rd, 2023, the federal government stormed in and added a 15-page indictment on K-Flock and seven others, now being labeled the leader of an organized crime syndicate. Go. The New York federal court is demanding that the 19-year-old rapper serve a minimum of life in prison a or minimum. a maximum of the death penalty. What? New York ain't planned though. He was only 18 and now you your whole life gone. New York ain't playing though, you know. Your whole life gone. I don't know how boys do it in New York. With a minimum of life in prison <laughs> or a maximum of the death penalty. Of a suspect wanted in a deadly shooting in Harlem. The incident took place yesterday morning on. That's a problem. I think it's South and Bronx. You're gonna put him in a truck and bring him to the block. Very up shot. Very good. Very good. Bro, I, ain't gonna he... care. I like how he edited this though. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. did your thing. Before he was ever known as K-Flock, he was just Kevin Perez, born Aww. April 20th, 2003 mm. in the Bronx, New York. Although the Bronx is the birthplace of hip-hop music, 40% of the borough lives below the poverty line, making it a hub for crime and gang activity. Unfortunately, he was no exception to that growing up in this environment. His mom says he tried to play sports, boxing, and was also into fashion, but she never expected him to become a rapper. He wanted to actually do clothing designs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I had him in boxing because that's what we do. Things like that, but never nothing of music, ever. School never interested him either. He already had an early mindset of getting out on the streets, and he did so with the hustle of someone twice his age. At just 10 years old, he had already been outside. That was like, um, hold on. That was like, did he though? He ain't 10 right there though. Yeah. He 10. Yeah, that's him at 10. I am. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. Someone twice his age. At just 10 years old, he had already been outside hanging on the block. He like K Flock took note of what other rappers were doing at the time in Chicago. Because while he was growing up in the Bronx, the Chicago drill scene was starting to take over. Although young, in his mind, he was old enough to start hustling and meeting new people in the neighborhood. Even though K-Flock was good at making enemies, he was even better at making friends. Mm. Oh. 
This the side that Aaron Howard or Dougie on. B is right. actually his blood cousin, but the two grew up like good friends. Oh, then there was you Dougie B too. I knew about um the other one um his cousin his the other the one cousin B point. yeah um they I forgot his name but Dougie B too I didn't know he was related Dougie B. Or Dougie B is actually his blood cousin, but the two grew up like good friends. Then there was Quayshawn or B Love as we know him. He was the oldest and had a lot of influence over them, including being the first one to pick up rapping. And lastly, there was also Jalen, known as PMVJ, who at one point was their friend. Needless to say, B-Love had already been in the streets and he had some connections and was already making a name for himself. To them, the streets were too much fun. This was their mindset at a young age. Being young and not fully understanding the lifestyle that came with it, losing family and friends was part of growing up in the Bronx. Being from 187th Street, K-Flock repped a gang called Sevside and DOA. And like any set, they were at war with a few others. Sometimes they even referred to themselves as EBK or everybody killers. How you EBK? Cause anybody oh, can get shot. Oh, that's what EBK means. Everybody killer. Mm. I've seen some. There was things some mother junk in the comments. Y'all be y'all be so wrong in the comments, bro. <laughs> bro y'all be like, hey, and we just be listening, bro. Referred to themselves that's as the EBK call. or everybody killers. How you EBK? Cause anybody can get shot. So you can imagine they had a lot of enemies, with the YGs and OGs being the main ops of Sevside. As I mentioned, B-Love was the first one to start recording music, but he didn't like the way his songs were coming out, so he ended up giving it up for a while and never released the songs. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, PMVJ would actually be the first one to find some success with songs like OMBK. Seeing that PMVJ could get views like that only made them realize they could do it as well, mm -hmm. seeing they all come from the same area. Shortly after, B-Love ended up doing some time behind bars, later claiming that someone had snitched on him. This made him hate the street politics, wanting to pursue music more so he could leave that behind. But while this was happening, K-Flock was running his ops down in the streets and would even go live on Instagram, showing him in hoods he wasn't supposed to be in like he was bulletproof. I make it known when I'm on his side. Careful more there, boys down look, boys still down there. Boys still down there. Although negative, this attention would actually put his name out there so his reputation was quickly building. In just a few months, Flocka had made a few hundred fans that would watch his streams where he taunted his enemies. The of idea course. of making like music that. still what? wasn't on his mind though. Yeah, the streets it. had his full attention. I'm not, I wasn't really the rapper, I was really the rapper right here. <laughs> However, the atmosphere of New York's music scene was quickly changing. Before this, auto-tune melodic rappers like A Boogie and Lil TJ had been setting the tone. But 2018 saw the rise of Brooklyn drill rappers who began using UK drill beats, giving a whole new sound that quickly took over the city. New drill rappers were popping up all over Brooklyn, while the Bronx was struggling to get anywhere close to that kind of recognition. But that was about to change. Oh snap. That's what I'm saying. That was not like, when he made a car, In 2019, B-Love came home from his sentence, and upon his return, Dougie B convinced him and K-Flock to start rapping seriously. But things were only getting more complicated in the streets. At this point, their friend PMVJ started repping a new set, and Dougie B and others were upset about that. What is your reason why you don't like me? Why, bro? You used to stay on me. I used to take care of all that. Tell me why you don't like me, bro. He's a big I don't care about you. One day, PMVJ was back in Sevside visiting his family when Dougie B and a friend pulled up allegedly asking PMVJ's mom if he was home. She, unknowing of the beef, told them that he was upstairs if they wanted to hang out. This would ultimately lead up to Dougie B taking the chain off of his neck and recording the entire incident. Up there? In his place? In his place? Nah. That's messed nah. up. Cause his mama thought it was cool. She like, oh yeah, he upstairs, baby. He gone up there. Nah. And he went, now he went up there and snapped the boy a chain. Off of his neck and recording the entire incident. K Flock, of course, would side with Dougie B, and the rest was history. Because of this, though, Dougie B would actually spend some time in jail for the robbery. <laughs> with Dougie gone, B Love and K Flock were still in the streets looking for a way out. But for an undisclosed reason due to being a minor, K Flock was then also put into a juvenile detention center for a short period of time. With B-Love the only one still holding on to his freedom, he began freestyling over drill beats until K-Flock came home. Mm -hmm. When Flocka was released, B-Love sat him down and told him he should really give rapping his full attention. And within time, he booked a studio session for him where he recorded his first track. That's real. On May 26, 2020, K-Flock dropped That's, 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 that's somebody that yeah. wants to get you out like, streets for real, like that's your dog. Real. Like, mm -hmm. he's serious about stuff. Like, listen, we can't be doing this forever. We gotta do better. Yeah, bro. And that's, I, I like that. I respect him, Where he recorded his first track. On May 26, 2020, K-Flock dropped that song, which was titled FTO. 
a remix to 22G's Blicky Freestyle. Never heard it. The song amassed over 100,000 views due to the hype K Flock had already been building in the streets, and now everyone wanted to hear him rap. 22G's even ended up giving him props for the remix, a huge success for his first song. One month went by and B-Love dropped his first official song as well, No Hook, which also saw about the same success. They now had a platform to grow off of and put the Bronx drill movement on the map. Dropping music at least once a month and collabing on many of them, their names were quickly becoming the talk of the city. They also made sure to shout out Dougie B in verses while he was still locked away, so his mm. past music was also getting recognized and gave him a small buzz for when he got out. Hearing. But with all the attention they were now getting, it was also putting an even larger target on their backs. Every song became more specific, targeting different ops, but this is also what made it so popular in the first place. Yes. They made it a point to help each other stay on track, and no matter what was happening in the streets, they had to keep recording music if they were going to make it out. Yeah. Dougie B was released around August of 2020, and when he saw the momentum B-Love and K-Flock had built up, he quickly rejoined the mix. This is when things would really start to take off, kind of like a trio except they all had their own individual careers. In March of 2021, the three of them dropped their song Brotherly Love. Hmm. The first month it was out, it got over a million views and really put them on the map. Did we do that? I think, I, think, I think some other group, some other gang did it. Hmm. Yeah. For a million views and really put them on the map. I feel like a famous rapper from college. <laughs> People from outside the city were now tuning in and their fan base grew a lot after this. A big reason the music was catching on was because they didn't just copy the drill sound that Brooklyn was seeing success with, but rather they put their own twist on it, making it an entirely new sound. And although other Bronx rappers were getting views too, it was really these three who took it to that next level. From here forward, their songs were easily gathering millions of views every time. But make no mistake, they were still in the middle of a war. Things between Sevside, the YGs, and OGs was heating up. And the music. In the midst of all that blowing up, going up, you still got a beef with a bitch. Down the street. I would have I would have just cleared cleared the city, bro. And focus, really focus. The real right, real talk for real. In the middle of a war. Things between Sevside, the YGs, and OGs was heating up, and the music was only adding fuel to the fire for all sides. Unlike most gangs that you've heard about in the past, the ones doing the most damage here in the Bronx were actually kids from the ages of 12 to 18. Yes. These kids are younger and wilder than anything you could imagine, mm -hmm. and they're pulling triggers. During this time, K-Flock was having beef with his own cousin and oh, repping the gang, just man. because he was repping a different set, and that just shows how serious they took it. It's no more free Dougie B. But it's be ah. <laughs> then there was another situation with rapper Edot, who at one point was friends with K as well. After an Instagram live showed Edot smoking and chilling with K Flock's ops, their friendship was over as well. 16 with 2 million views. They never do that before. All my ops, 18, 19, 20, 21, I be for old great. All in, nah, they not even my ops. I'm smacked. I'm high. I love that. They not my ops. Fans. Fans. At this point, it seemed like everybody had a problem with everybody. Yeah. But again, every single one of them Where's was benefiting the from these beefs. Mm -hmm. Bronx Drill had everybody tuned in. But at what cost? In July, a 21-year-old rapper named Ty Swish was shot in the head while outside of his apartment complex. Yeah. Two days later, a 13-year-old named Jarian was chased down and shot outside of a cafe in Belmont. Yeah, Joe, it was a shooting that left a well, they man, I told you that before. Of teenagers man, here man. horrified that someone could do this. The NYPD tonight is asking for anyone with information to help them find the killer. It's not confirmed, but it's rumored that this was probably retaliation for Ty Swish's death from just a few days before. On July 11th, another 16-year-old rapper named Raw G's was getting into an Uber headed to a studio oh, session. No Two kids on scooters rolled up from behind him and shot him. Raw G's had been mocking the death of Jerrion on social media just an hour before. He was like him. Around 11.30 Sunday night by the corner of East 178th Street and Webster Avenue in the Bronx, police say two men pulled scooters up next to a cab Medrano was taking to a recording studio. They then shot him in his head and chest, killing him. A perpetual cycle of dissing and then death was happening. But while this war was brewing between everyone, K-Flock, Dougie B, and B-Love were on the brink of going mainstream. Something they had been risking their lives for in an attempt to make it out was finally about to pay off. Shortly after, K-Flock dropped his song Being Honest and he would get his first collab from a mainstream artist when G-Herbo gave him a verse. 
following suit, Lil TJ and 504 would also collaborate with the song In The Mood. Now he was getting radio play on Hot 97, and together with B-Love, he walked onto his first major show yeah. at Rolling Loud. K-Flock, B-Love, and Dougie B would all sign record deals shortly after, with oh. K-Flock's rumor to have been worth a few million dollars. Now they had the money and freedom they had been working hard for, but it's a double-edged sword. The dissing and gang lifestyle was partially the reason they became so popular, yeah. so it's hard to just leave that behind at this point. You're right, yeah. But okay. with money in his pockets, yeah, because the thing about it, it's all they fancy want to listen to, it's all they want. So, so they talk about a new topic, it's like, what the hell? Like, we want that old junk better. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, we don't want to hear about that, all that sweet stuff, no mm -hmm. real stuff. We yeah. want to hear about you killing your ops. Yeah. Popular, so it's hard to just leave that behind at this point. But with money in his pockets, he was seen enjoying the finer things in life. Taking trips to Miami, riding around in a new BMW, and spoiling his little sister and girlfriend with shopping Aww. trips. But the money and fame only made him an even larger yeah, target for his ops, which means he now had to think twice before doing anything in his home city. And you better believe they were watching his every move. Yeah, the morning of December sixteenth, K Flock woke up. Look, I, mean, look, I, mean, I can't go back to the uh, bro. I got all them up, bro. This one's, it's probably because like everybody gonna be on your back though. Everybody, like, come on, you know, all that dissing you did, bro. It, just think about it. When people go like go up, they come from the hood. They mm -hmm. always end up getting killed in their hometown or some, from somebody in their hometown. You know, I thought that situation happened. I thought he wasn't even signed yet. He was just chilling. You know, he was in signed. He had no money. He was just chilling. The, well, he had money, but like. Mm -hmm. He ain't had big money to be moving out and stuff. But he already was signed and everything. You still went back, bro. I would never went back. And I would have got my people out. Like, my uh, mom and my sister. Like, come on. Come on. Hell yeah. The morning of December 16th, K-Flock woke up and was seen on live, once again taunting his enemies to come find him. But he made sure to let him know he wasn't lacking as he revealed a gun tucked in his belt. Hours later, he was walking down Amsterdam Avenue in 151st Whoa, Street. <laughs> a shiesty covered most of his face, but a $1,500 Montclair jacket, unreleased Air Jordans, and a $1,400 pair of Amiri jeans may have still gave his identity away. Mm. As he passed by a barber shop, surveillance shows Oscar Hernandez come storming out to confront K Flock. Although he walks out of sight of the cameras for a second, we can assume threats were being made on both ends. After Oscar turned his back to walk away, K Flock pulled the gun from under his jacket and shot him twice, in the neck and back. Oscar so he, would die later in the hospital while K Flock. So he tried to walk away. So then there's no longer self defense. He tried to walk? Mm -hmm. So he shot him in the back? Mm -hmm. If he shot him in the back, yeah, they'd be like, they're yeah, self -defense. yeah, they're gonna get him like that. Yeah, because that happened with a case over here. Mm -hmm. In the oh. neck and mm -hmm. I'm just saying like damn yeah, yeah but like, at that point it's not so you, you could have been but it's so tricky. Yeah. It's so tricky. You shot him in the back. We, we heard something like this before. Was it the one that happened here, like you said? In, in on Pepe, yeah, when I when I was telling the story. Yeah. Back to walk away. K Flock pulled the gun from under his jacket and shot him twice in the neck and back. Oscar would die later in the hospital while K Flock quickly fled the scene. Hope you just get probation. Was inside oh. a barber shop when the gunman opened the door. But they they trying to pull a couple what charges, like at, thirteen oh, pages. Victim went outside. Ain't no probation. <laughs> Because he was so easy to identify and investigators had access to surveillance from multiple angles, a warrant was issued only six days later. But the police wouldn't need to look for him. On December 23rd, Kay hired a well-known lawyer named Scott Lima to represent him. They drove together to the 30th precinct where he surrendered himself. In this statement, his lawyer describes that police had received a tip that Kay Flock wasn't actually the shooter in the surveillance footage. But that was quickly shut down. Oh, he him. was denied bond and waited behind bars while more evidence was collected by the police. Then in March, out of nowhere, Kay would fire his old lawyer and hire the same lawyer who represented El Chapo, a mm. promising sign. Mm. In this Instagram post, his new lawyer stated that he was excited to work with Kay Flock and was confident he would beat this trial. Dang, I mean he got El Chapo up. But we got El Chapo money. Because El Chapo probably held that man told that man, listen, if you don't get me, I'm gonna kill you. Hey, well, El Chapo right now, he's still in there. Still got him. They do? I thought he, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's his son that's tearing it up over there in Mexico. I think they got his son. Oh. They, then they got him out, though, but they still. They got him. I don't know if they got his son back, but I don't, I don't know. They got his wife, too. The chopper wife. I don't know if she out. I think she out, too. I don't know. I know that the army over there tried to get his brother, and yep. the people went crazy. But I don't know if they got him, though. So, mm. yeah. Who represented El Chapo, a promising sign. In this Instagram post, his new lawyer stated that he was excited to work with K Flock and was confident he would beat this trial. So he did take 
he did shoot him in self-defense. That's what the allegation is. You know, I don't want to talk too much about the details of the case, okay. but the government claims that he pulled the gun out and shot him. But at the same time, the person that was dead on the ground had his hand on a loaded weapon, illegal loaded weapon. KFLOG then posted several updated photos with the caption reading, All good, don't believe the blogs or internet. Everything trendy, forever DOA. Over the summer of 2022, his attorney began to argue self-defense, claiming Kay had no intentions or premeditation to murder Oscar, but instead feared for his life. After all, he was in a dangerous part of town and he was the one who was confronted in the situation. Social media had been supporting free K-Flock and many believed him to be released sooner than later, but his court appearances were being postponed one after another. In November of 2022, fans tuning in would explode when the courts made an error showing his next court date to take place in December of 2028. It better be an error. It better be an error, bro. What? It better be an error sitting there. By the time his court comes, you better let me out. I'm dead by the time, bitch. Let me out. What do you mean? Court date to take place in December of 2028, leaving many to wonder if this was a mistake. But shortly after, the next court appearance was updated and corrected. This time set for November 16th, but even that would be delayed once again. Mm. The only update the world would get was a recorded phone call of K-Flock dropping bars saying he felt confident he would be home in 2023. No, 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 trying to hold they just really like that's how you know they ain't got no real evidence they're trying to find something to stick it's, it's just like the melee situation mm -hmm. how long fam like when i'm gonna start yeah, y'all want them boys to admit something they did i don't know if, if they didn't they don't listen they if, they did it, if yeah. they didn't do it if you y'all want them to do it yeah. just because you know just to this, get it over with yeah they're like, trying to make them sweat yeah mm. it's like they did them boys um the four boys five boys back then yeah um, central five yeah something like that yeah 23. His next appearance was set for February 2023, and those tuned into the drill scene were patiently awaiting for the return of the Bronx's biggest drill artist. Instead, what fans and K-Flock would get would be a wake-up call that no one could see coming. Early on the morning of February 23rd, before Kay was set to appear in court, the federal government would release a 15-page indictment on him and seven others of the gang oh, Sev side under the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organization Act, or RICO charges. And these are very serious accusations. Mm -hmm. Normally the evidence behind RICO charges go back many years. But in K-Flock and Sevside's case, it was only two years worth of evidence, leaving many to believe this was rushed in a desperate attempt to keep K-Flock away yeah. and locked up. Regardless, the government had gathered enough evidence against him and his entire gang, wanting to make an example out of all of them due to New York having some of the strictest sentencing and an image to uphold. New York wasn't taking a liking to the image that K-Flock and his music were giving the city. After all, this is the home of the stock exchange and some of the wealthiest people in the country. The last thing they want is kids glorifying murders in their city. New York City, they're not waiting for that. You're not uh -huh. gonna make the city where e-commerce and the stock market lives look like a crime infested haven to the rest of the world mm, and when you're that, now a that's rapper and you're going... new york is like for the rich people the politicians mm -hmm. all this and that and then when they see all that gang they're like oh no nah, we we're gonna clean the street the streets i feel like that's why they hitting a lot of them gang members with rico charges over there but they still gonna do it so yeah infested <laughs> haven to the rest of the world and when you're now a rapper and you're going on live to say hey i have a gun and i'm chasing it down you're not going to do it in new york city you can do this in chicago you can do this in houston you can do this in miami you will never in life do try it. miami go ahead you try to go you can't you do, do this that in houston uh, in miami yeah, you, you will never in life do this in new york city now it suddenly made sense why k-flock's court date was being delayed what most initially thought would be no more than a few years quickly turned into a minimum life sentence, with the maximum being the death penalty. Neither Kay or his defense have responded as of now, only a few recent photos of prison where Kay is seen here. Police are now gathering all seven indicted members and Kay Flock's life hangs in the middle. He wanted to be the one who made the change for everyone around him, but at just 19 years old, he may have already lost the chance of being a free man.
I just want my whole hood to be on. Clean shit. I want to be the nigga that make the change for everybody. That's oh. not great. Time it was really his fault. You yeah, feel me? but it was like you put yourself in that position because you went. And you ain't get out. Uh, ah. <laughs> we hate it for the. Like, that's the reality of it. Like, yeah, you gotta change. You, you, you should have stayed away, bro. Yeah, when you get them deals, go on, fly out, fam. Private jet. You know you got it. Listen. Let a bit talk. They can't. They don't know where you at. They ain't, they ain't touching your money. They can't reach you. You know what I'm saying? But listen, at the end of the day, though, man, y'all know what's up. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment, sure. hit notification bell. Cause you know what, baby. Baby. That's on game.